now discuss suppression of revolt the revolt was finally suppressed the british captured delhi on september 20 1857 after prolonged the and bitter fighting john nicholas the leader of the siege was badly wounded was badly wounded <laughs> and later succumbed uh, to his injuries Bahadusha was taken prisoner the royal royal princes were captured and butchered on the spot publicly spot at point blank range by lieutenant Hudson himself the emperor was exile, ex, exiled to Rangoon where he died in 1862 thus the great house of Mughals which finally and completely extinguished terrible vengeance vengeance was, was wreaked on the inhabitants, inhabitants of Delhi with the fall of Delhi the, the focal point of the revolt disappeared next one of the one of uh, one by one all the great leaders of the revolt failed military operation for the uh, recapture of Ka Kanpur were closely associated with recovery of Lucknow. Sir Colin Campbell occupied Kas uh, Kanpur on de December 6, 1857. Nana Sahib defeated at Kanpur escaped escaped in Nepal to Nepal in, in, in early 1859. Where we heard uh, to again he his close association as a Tatia Topi escaped, escaped into the jungles of central India but was captured while asleep, asleep in April 1859 and put to death. The Rani of Jhansi had died, had died on the battlefield earlier in June 1858. Jhansi was recaptured by Sir Hagroj. 1859 can converting Bhakat Khan Khan Bahadur Khan of Barely Rao Sahib brother of Nana Sahib uh, so brother of Nana Sahib and Molabi Molabi Ahmad Ahmadullah were died all died the so all are died while the brigand of Aud was camped to hide a Nepal at Venus a rebellion had been organized with the will which was which mostly suppressed by colonel Neil who would to death all suspected rebels and even flow disorderly surprise by the end of 1859 British authority over India was firmly established the British government had to pour immense supplies of men, money, and arms into the country. So, uh, though, though the Indians had to later repay the ex entire cost through their own suppression. Also, why the revolt failed, all India participation was absent. Limited territorial spread was one of the factors. There, there was no all, <coughs> sorry, all India winner about the revolt. In the eastern, southern, and the western parts of the India remained more, more or less unaffected, and this was probably because the earlier uprising in those regions had been brutally suppressed by the company. <coughs> so all classes uh, did not join. So all classes did not, did not join. Certainly, certain class says and groups did not join and in fact war against the revolt revolt uh, big zamindars acted as breakwaters or uh, to storm even our uh, talukdars backed off on promises of land re-situation re restitution and were spread out were spread out spread out moneylenders and merchants suffered the wrath uh, of the retainers badly and heavy anyway so their class interest better protected under British patronage. Educated, <coughs> sorry, educated Indians viewed this revolt. Viewed this revolt as backward-looking, so supportive 
of the feudal order and as reaction of traditional conservative forces to moderate modernity. These people had high hopes that the British would usurp usur in an era of modernization. Indians viewed as this revolt as backward looking for the feudal order and as a reaction of traditional conservative forces to modernity. These people had high hopes of that British uh, British would usur in an era of modernization. Big Jamindal Act Touch, Big Order, so Storm. Yeah. Okay. Most Indian most Indian rulers to refused to join and often gave give gave active help to the British. Rulers who did not participate included uh, the Sindhya and Gwalior, the Holkar and Hop in the rulers of Atila Sindh and other Sikh uh, yeah, chiefs chief tank, uh, chieftains and the Maharaja of Kashmir indeed by one estimate not more than one fourth of the total area and not more than one tenth of the total population was erected. So most Indian rulers have refused to join and poor arms and equipment the Indian soldiers were poorly equipped, equipped materially fighting generally with swords and spears and very few guns and muskets. Musk, 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 musk. On the other hand, the European soldiers were have very or high equipments. So most Indian rulers refused to join and often gave active help to the British. Rulers who did not participate included the Sindhya and of Gwalior and the Holkar and of Indore, the rulers of the Patiala Sindh and other Sikh, Sikh Sikh chiefsmen and Maharaja of Kashmir. Indeed, by one estimate, not more than one fourth of the total area and not more than one tenth of the total population was affected. So poor arms and equipment. The Indian soldiers were poorly equipped, equipped materially, materially fighting generally with swords and swords and spears and very few guns and muskets. On the other hand, so on the other hand, the European soldiers were equipped with the latest weapons of war, like. The Enfield rifle, the electric, the telegraph kept the commander in chief informed about the. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the, chief, uh, the electric uh, telegraph kept the commander in chief informed about the movements and strategy of the rebels. Un uncoordinated, coordinated, and poorly organized. The revolt was poorly organized with no coordination or central leadership. The principal rebels leader, rebel leaders, and the side, Tatya Dabi, uh, Kunwar Singh Lakshmi Bhai were not uh, no match uh, to the, their British opponents in general ship. In general ship. On the other hand, the East India Company was fortunate that fortunate in having in the services. So uncoordinated and poorly organized, the revolt was poorly organized uh, with no coordination. East India Company was fortunate in having in the services of men of exceptional abilities in the Lawrence. Brothers John Nicholas James Outram, Henry Hap, Henry Havelcock, etc. No unified ideology. The mutineers lacked a clear understanding. A colonial rule not did they have a forward-looking program, a coherent ideology, political perspective, or a societal alternative. The rebels represented diverse elements with a different with different grievances and concepts of current politics. Unified ideology, the missionaries lacked a clear understanding of colonial rule, nor did they have a forward-looking program, a coherent ideology, a political perspective, or social alternative. The rebels represented diverse elements with differing, differing grievances and concepts of current politics. The lack of unity among Indians was perhaps unavoidable at this stage of Indian history. Modern nationalism was the was as yet unknown in India. In fact, the revolt of 1857 played an important role. So next we discuss. So uh, no unified ideology. The mutineers lacked to be lacked a clear understanding of the colonial rule. Not that they did they have the forward-looking program, a current ideology, a political perspective, or a societal alternative. The rebels represented diverse elements with different grievances and concepts of current politics. A lack of unity among. Uh, 
Lego unity amount. The unity amount Indians which was part of the available uh, this stage of modern India. History modern history modern nationalism which plays a uh, play was an uh, yet unknown in India. Oh, in fact, the revolt in '57 played an important role uh, in bringing the Indian people together and impacting, imparting to them as uh, them the concerns of belonging to one country. In the Muslim energy factor. So during the during the entire revolt, there was complete cooperation between Hindus and Muslim all at all levels. People, soldiers, leaders, all rebels acknowledged Bahadur Shah Zafar. A Muslim, uh, a Muslim, as emperor, and the first uh, impulse uh, of the Hindu sepoys at Virat was to launch to Delhi, the Mughal Imperial. So here, he, during the entire revolt, there was a, was a so the revolt uh, 1857 played an important role in bringing bringing the Indian people together and imparting to them the concerns of belonging to one and country. Hindu Muslim unity factor. During the entire revolt, there was a complete cooperation between Hindu and Muslims at all levels, people, soldiers, leaders, all rebels acknowledge Bahadur Shah Zafar, a Muslim, as an emperor of, and as the first impulse of the Hindu of the Hindu Sepa at Mirat was uh, to march and to Delhi. The Mughal Empire Imperial The Mughal Imperial uh, Mughal Imperial capital. Okay, according to Mulan uh, Ajad, two facts stand out clearly in the midest, midest of the tangled, uh, tang tangled story of the rising of 1857. The first is the remarkable sense of unity among the uh, Hindus and the Muslims of India in this period. To the other is the deep loyalty which the people. <coughs> The people felt for the Mughal crown. The first of the remarkable sense of unity among the Hindus and the Muslims in of India within this period. The other is the deep loyalty which the people felt for the Mughal crown. So rebels and superiors, sepoys, both Hindu and Muslim, respected each other, each other's sentiments, and uh, immediate banning of cow slaughter was the order. Once the revolt was successful in a particular area, both Hindus and Muslims were reprinted in leadership. For instance, Nana Sahib had, uh, had Ajimullah, a Muslim and an expert in political propaganda. The first in the remarkable sense of unity among the Hindus and Muslims of India in this period. The other is the deep loyalty, or uh, loyalty with which the people felt for the Mughal grounds, rebels and sepoys, both Hindu and Muslim, respected each other's sentiments. Immediate banning of cow slaughter was ordered once the revolt was successful in a particular area. Both Hindu and Muslim were, are well represented in their leadership. For instance, Nana Saiba had Ajimullah, a Muslim and an expert in political propaganda, as an as aide. So here all rebels uh, acknowledge Bahadur Shah Zafar Muslim as an emperor and the first impulse of the Hindu Sipai at Bharat. <laughs> so next a Muslim and an expert uh, in political propaganda as an uh, aid. Well, Lakshmi Bai had the solid support of Afghan soldiers. Thus the events of 1857 demonstrated that the people and politics of India were not Basically, communal or secretarial, secretary before 1857. Thus, the events of 1857 demonstrated that the peoples and politics of India were not basically communal or secretary before 1857. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. So, nature of the revolt. So, nature of the revolt. The views of sub differ of the nature on, on the nature of the 1857 revolt. It was a more to big to some British historian, a wholly un unpatriotic and selfish mutiny with no native leadership. Views differ. Some views different of, of the name uh, nature of the 1857 revolt. It was the Sepoy. It, it was a Mary Sepoy mutiny. 
to some British historians, a wholly unpatriotic and selfish development in, with no leadership, native, no native leadership, and no popular support. Uh, Sir John uh, Shelley, however, uh, John Shelley uh, speech, it is however that is not a complete picture of the event. And the however, is not however that is not a complete picture of the event as it involved in many sections of the civil population and just no, and not just with the Sipai. The discontent of the Sipai was just one cause of the disturbance. The Dr. K. Dadatta considered the revolt of eighteen fifty seven to have been in the main of a main in the main a military outbreak in which was taken advantage of, of by certain discontent discontented princes and landlords whose interest had been <coughs> whose interest had been affected by the new political order. The, the last mentioned factor uh, gave it an area, area uh, of particular uprising in certain areas. It was never all Indian in character, but it was localized, restricted, poorly. So further sepoys, this is said that the, the moment was marked by absence of cohesion and uh, unity of, of uh, purpose among the various sections of the, of the rebels. It was the beginning of the 12th century that the 18th that the 1857 revolt came to be in interpreted as a planned war and of national independence by Dr. By G. D. Samarkar. In his book, The Indian War of Independence, 1857, and uh, uh, Samarkar called the revolt the first uh, war of the Indian independence. Samarkar is a important person. Samarkar called the revolt the Samarkar, Samarkar called the revolt the first war of Indi Indian independence. He said it was inspired by the lofty ideal of self-rule by Indian Indians. He said it was inspired by the lofty ideal of self-rule by Indians through a nationalist of such. Dr. Essential in the in 1857 seven considers, considers the revolt as as play as having begun as the as a fight for religion but ending as a war of independence. Important it is. Dr. R. C. Mujumdar, however, considers it was neither the first nor the national or not the hour of independence, as large parts of the country remained unaffected and many sections of the people took no part of the upsurge. Dr. R. C. Mujumdar, so views 1857 stands firmly in a, in a historical continuum. And not, of course, of course, it was a direct product of social efforts the blowing of the political crust, but rather the fortuitous, fortuitous, fortuitous conjuncture that led to these forces then, like 1850 or 1848, or in Europe, despite, despite obvious disparities, it was an uprising since. Not important, it is. According to Marxist historian, the 1857 revolt was the struggle of the soldiers, peasant democratic combine. According to the Marxist historian, the 1857 revolt was the struggling of the soldier peasant democratic combine against foreign as well as feudal bondage. The struggle of the soldier peasant democratic combined against foreign as well as the federal bondage. However, this view can be questioned the light of the fact that the leaders of the revolt themselves come uh, come from the federal background. Johnny Nehru considered as the, as considered the revolt of 1857 as essentially a feudal uprising, though there were some uh, nationalistic elements in it. So, discovery of India. Even though failed, the revolt was the last ditch strand of feudalism, and 
against commercial, commercial capitalism, Arshidat also saw the significance of the revolt of the peasantry against foreign domination. So Jawaharlal Nehru considered that the essential of feudal uprising through there were some nationalist elements and Emin Roy revolt was the last ditch China feudalism against the commercial capitalism. The revolt of 1857 was not, uh, no, is not to easy, uh, not easy to categorize, while one can easily dismiss some views. Elia Reyes, who considers that it is to be one of fanatic religionistics against Christians, Christians. So it is uh, all a lot important. So uh, was not a part of the revolt. So each of the leaders had a personal cause for revolt being. So Dr. Sen points out national revolutions are mostly the work of the a minority with her without the active support of the masses. From the point of view, the 1857 rebellion was can claim a national can character. One may say that the revolt of 1857 was a first great struggle of India. Indians to throw the of British, British rule even. This view has been questioned by some historians of Pillar Sam. So consequences next to this class. Eighteen fifty seven. So the variable eighteen fifty seven may marks a uh, turning points of the in the history of India it led the far reaching challenges changes in the system of the administration and the politics of the British government. Even before the before the default of before, it, before the revolt could be suppressed fully, the British Parliament on August to 1858 passed an act for the better government of India. The act the act declared Queen Victoria as the sovereign of British India and pro provided for the appointed as of Secretary of State of India for India a member of the British cabinet the direct responsibility for the administration of the country uh, was assumed by the British Crown and company rule was abolished the assumption, assumption of the government of India by the sovereign of Great Britain was announced by Lord Canning uh, J. at Durban at Allahabad in the Queen's proclamation issued. As per Queen Queen's proclamation, the era of era of annexations and expansion had ended, and the British Prince promised to respect the dignity of and rights of the native princes. Indian states were henceforth of uh, to recognize the paramountcy of the British Crown and were to be treated as. Indian states were henceforth treated as parts of the single charge. The people of India were, were promised freedom of religion without interference from British officials. officials. The proclamation also promised equal and impartial protection under the law to all Indians besides the equal opportunities in government services respectively of race or creed. It was also promised that old uh, Indian rights, customs and practices will be given. The army, which was at, at the forefront of the outbreak, uh, was for throughly, throughly recognized and British military policy came to be dominated and by the ideas around division and division and counterpoise. The British could no longer depend on the individual loyalty, so that so the number of Indian soldiers was drastically reduced. Even the, the European, the number of European soldiers was increased. The concept yeah, of divide and rule was adopted by the, with separate uh, units, units being created on the basis of caste, uh, community and religion. Recruits mm, were to be drawn from the martial races of Punjab, Nepal and Northwestern countries who had proved loyal uh, to the British. During the revolt effort uh, was made to keep the army away from civilian population.
ذا امالجاميشن سكيم 1861 موف ذا Agency to move the company's European troops without the services of the town. Further, the European troops of India, troops of India, the European troops of India, uh, constantly revamped uh, and periodical visits to England, sometimes termed as a linked Italian scheme. All Indian all artillery units and secondly, it's not important. So, write me to me. In the wake of transfer of force uh, to, uh, from the British East India Company and the British Crown, a section of the European forces em employed under the company resent, um, resented the move um, that required the three uh, presidency armies and transferred their allegiance from the defunct uh, company of the to a queen as in the British Army. The, res the resentment resulted in some, in some unrest to term that word mutiny. <coughs> In the wake of the transfer of powers uh, from the British East India Company, the British Crown, a section of European forces employed under the company, resented the movement that required the three presidents army, armies to transfer their allegiance from the, refer, from the defunct company up to the Queen in the, as in the army, British Army. The resentment resulted in some unrest termed as white mutiny prayer. Uh, to add 1861, there were two separate military forces in India operating under the British rule. One was the Queen's Army, and the others uh, comprised units of the East India Company. The company's troops received the uh, but uh, extra allowance uh, to, of pay to cover various ex expenditures related to operations in area other than the home territory, which required transfer of power. The but uh, was stopped. Not canning legalistic interpretation. The white meeting was seen as a potential threat to the already perceived precarious British position is in India, with the potential of inciting towards the rebellion against still ex excited population of India. So, Queen's Army, European forces, and the demand of the three and a clear village of its passage at home. So, it is not important. White meeting. Precarious British position in India is the potential of inciting reward rebellion among the still excited population of in India. The demands for the European forces included an en enlistment bonus or a choice of release from their obligation. Finally, the demand for free and clear release with free, with free passage home was accepted, and men adept apartheid to it at home. It is also believed that open rebellion and physical violence on the part of European forces were such that there was little possibility of being accepted into the Queen's army. No Indian was uh, thought fit to de deserve the King's mission. And a new English recruit was considered Separate to an Indian official holding the Viceroy Commission, the earlier reformist zeal of a self confident Victorian liberalized incorporated as many liberals in Britain began to believe that weakness were beyond reform. The new approach conservative bent of liberalism, as it was called by Thomas Metcalf, had the solid support of the conservative and Historic classes of England whose escape espoused, espoused the complete non interference in the traditional structure of Indian society. Thus, the era of the reforms come to an end. In Britain, India more autocratic, it began denying the aspirations of the educated Indians for start sharing power in the long term. This link British attitude proved proved counterproductive for the Europeans as this caused frustrations of in the educated Indian middle classes and gave rise to modern nationalism. As in the policy of the divide and revolt started uh, in earnest after the revolt of 1857, the British used one class community against another um, unscrupulously. Thus, socially, there was immediate 
is remediable at the data railway generation and various territorial conquest was at the at a great period of symbolic economy looted by the British began in the Indian economy was fully exploited. Okay, racial hatred and uh, suspicion between the Indians and the English was probably the worst legacy of the revolt. The issues and general journals in Britain featured the Indians as subhuman and creatures who could be kept each in check only by superior forces the proponents of imperialism in india deemed the indian population as an earth of trust and subjected them to insults and contempt the contemporary structure of the indian in the government uh, was regime modeled and based on the nation as a of a master race justifying the military of white men burdened burden this burden burdened the goal between the rulers and the ruled besides causing the eruptions of political controversies, demonstration and the act of violence in the coming period significance of the revolt for the British. The revolt of the 18th century proved useful in that it showed of the glaring shortcoming in a company's administration and in the NRC army. <laughs> which uh, they re rectified pro pro uh, promptly, these defects would never have been revealed to the world in the revolt that had not had happened uh, for the end of the, uh, for the, end of the 1847 revolt had a major influence and it was a struggle for, for, for freedom. is brought out uh, in the open grievances of people and the sepoys which were seen in the to the guardian end. so uh, so which were uh, seen uh, to be genuine however it was also obvious that the primitive arms which the indian possessed are no match for the advanced defense of the british so furthermore the uh, same senseless autocrat atrocities committed by both sides to soft Indians intellectuals who, uh, who were increasingly admitted that violence uh, was to be cheered uh, in any such struggle for freedom the educated middle class which was a growing section did not believe in the violence and prefer uh, an orderly approach <laughs> but the order of the revolt of 1857 did established local traditions of the resistance of British rule which are to be in the help in the course of the third national struggle for freedom. So summary, it is our summary. A revolt economic causes theory, political causes, military causes. And the centers of the revolt, Delhi, Kanpur, Lucknow, Marili, Bihar, Faidabad, Jasin, Bhagat. <coughs> Sorry. The British British resistant. Causes yeah. of failure, British. And nature. 